thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor to be uh, coming over here from Dubai and, and presenting to you uh, the project, uh, which is the Office of the Future, uh, the world's first fully occupied 3D printed building. Uh, here's the clicker. Right. Uh, so before I, wanna begin, before I begin, I want to really just acknowledge uh, that it has been a, a hugely collaborative effort, um, not least of which uh, the, the roles of Gensler and Thornton Tomasetti in actually being involved in the, in the concept stages of the project. And, uh, and, and I just wanted to acknowledge them amongst others uh, in, in the development um, of the first 3D printed and fully occupied building in the world. So you can see here, this is a picture of a typical construction site. It happens to be from Dubai, but it is, it is pretty much typical of our global position in terms of uh, construction uh, today. Uh, you can see something, uh, a process here that is uh, in, uh, highly laborious, uh, highly costly, uh, very slow, uh, very complex, unsafe, and quite frankly, completely out of sync with the technological possibilities of our time. And why is this? I mean, essentially, it is because the building industry is extremely risk averse. It is extremely uh, uh, focused on the ways that things have been done in the past and very unfocused on the way that things can be done in the future. But there are some projects, like the project that I'm going to present today, which is really more of a showcase or an example of how we can rethink uh, the, the construction process. So this, this idea of moving away from the archaic uh, um, uh, 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 process of constructing on the site is not a new, uh, it's not, it's not a new move to, to try to unitize or to uh, uh, industrialize the process of building construction. And actually, since post-war period, it's been uh, investigated in, in quite a bit of detail, such as, such as these projects in the past, moving the uh, construction of buildings away from the site itself and into the factory floor, where you can gain levels of controllability uh, and, and tolerances and modularization and repetitiveness that are difficult to achieve on site. So entire building elements arriving on the site prefabricated and pre-made. But the question is, are we becoming a slave in such uh, processes to the language that comes from prefabricated, modular-based architecture? Are we moving away from the kinds of architecture that was achievable a 1,000 years ago and having to settle for the kinds of designs that is essentially beholden to the process of repetitive, modular, off-site construction? There are some new approaches to that. CNC fabrication processes are allowing us to move back into a time where we could consider customized stone elements, such as the Gothic architecture that I showed you before. The, the skills and labor cost of producing such building elements are being overcome through robotic kind of processes, so that it is again possible to produce architecture of incredible complexity and specificity and responsiveness. The humble brick is being reinterpreted through the use of robotic construction methods to create a new kind of forms and richness of treatment. The brick itself can now be thought of something that it is not necessarily entirely uh, uh, um, repetitive in the way that it's duplicated, but rather that each brick itself is customized for its own position within a given structure or, or project, so that th these individual units can come together and make richer and more complex forms, environments that mediate light, that uh, absorb acoustic uh, uh, sounds, and create envelopes out of three-dimensionally fabricated building module elements that respond to nature and are adaptive in their design. But what you can see in all of these examples, and there are many, many examples out there of experiments in 3D printed construction at the scale of 
industrial design or even pavilion type buildings. But until this project, there had not been a fully completed, enclosed, occupied, 3D printed building that was serving the needs of a particular client and that was intended to remain as a permanently occupied structure. And so this, this was really the, has, has existed for some time in the imagination, but our role was to try to bring that from the render into reality. And actually, the office of the future was the brainchild of the ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed, who desired to maintain Dubai's position as one of the preeminent instigators of new technology and ambitious building methodologies to, to, to allow Dubai to develop the first 3D printed building in the world. So the office is the world's first fully functional and permanently occupied 3D printed building. It's a temporary home for the Dubai Future Foundation. But I think adding to the whole sort of process and background story, the project actually had no budget. There was no contractual relationship between any of the uh, involved parties. And there was a three month time frame to deliver from when we got involved in the project. And because of that incredibly constricted time scale, the structural elements of the project were actually being 3D printed even as we started to design and master plan the building itself. You can see here the 3D uh, printed trusses designed by Thornton Tomasetti uh, being assembled with the 3D printing uh, machine, uh, essentially a, a 100 foot by 40 foot uh, 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 volume uh, with a, a 3D printing head moving in the XYZ uh, axis and 3D printing these, these truss elements uh, in, in layers. Uh, essentially, the, compared to the image that I showed at the beginning, there was one technician involved in the, in the, um, in the fabrication process itself, and then 17 uh, uh, site members involved in bringing the, 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 the cassettes um, to, the, to the site. And there are some interesting properties that come from the 3D printed concrete itself which is different from traditionally cast concrete. As something that's laid down in layers, you see this sort of stratified uh, uh, um, layers of the, of, the, of the 3D printed concrete. The site itself, uh, which was just adjacent to the Museum of the Future, which is another project that we're working on in the area, had a number of mature trees that we wanted to preserve. And we had these 17 cassettes that you can see there on the left that were arriving, actually were in, in the process of being printed uh, as we came to the site. And we were very keen to maintain the trees and move these cassettes and master plan the site in such a way that we could keep those and use their shading potential to create micro environments and microclimates uh, for more comfort within the, the building complex itself. So you see here, the first five cassettes were used to create a public gallery space, uh, then a portal frame for, for the entry into the, uh, into, the, uh, into the project. And then the other cassettes originally were aligned as one continuous volume of the office space itself, but they were then staggered into a lobby, uh, into the executive uh, offices and into the staff offices. And, and with each stagger, we were able to bring views to the landscape into the building uh, and to bring natural light uh, also in, into the plan. And the master plan itself created a series of courtyard spaces around uh, the 3D printed concrete uh, truss uh, elements. So you can see here a view of the mature tree, the shaded cafe courtyard, and this collaborative space for the, for the, uh, for the, uh, the office of the future. The client asked us to explore the building skin uh, and really push the envelope in terms of what was possible with the, with the ability to 3D print essentially any form or any geometry that, that we, would, we would desire. And we were rather inspired by the traditional construction methods of the region, which is actually to use coral as a building block, a very lightweight, highly insulative material, but obviously not very sustainable to use coral uh, today. But one of the things that's fascinating about coral itself as an organism is that it effectively it does 3D print its own architecture. 
And what's also even more fascinating is that even coral living in exactly the same environment has evolved to 3D print different kinds of architecture because it adapts and responds to its environment in different kinds of ways. And we see a parallel between the rich complexity of the natural world in generating its own 3D printed architecture and bringing that kind of responsiveness and richness of geometry, complexity, and the ability to create integrated design that links both structure, MEP, interior design as one integrated system rather than thinking about it as separate and discrete kinds of trades. And so this kind of architecture starts to become possible where perhaps the structure is responding to the particular forces acting upon it or responding to the particular needs of light, privacy, and acoustics. And we used a number of algorithmic approaches to generate a coral skin uh, on the building itself for, uh, for, 3D, for the 3D printing and some small samples and then some one-to-one -one, uh, samples blown up here. Um, R&D and the building industry are not necessarily comfortable bedfellows. And in this particular case, as I mentioned at the beginning, we had a three-month deadline. And unfortunately, the time ran out to develop that more complex skin in, in more detail. But we still had to develop a method by which to clad the 3D printed uh, concrete elements. Uh, and you can see the uh, CNC cut EPS uh, super insulating external cladding material which was actually built up to around 800 millimeters on top of the 3D printed cassettes that you can see there in section uh, and highlighted in, in red. And this actually gave an opportunity to overhang the open glazed areas and self-shade the, the glazed zones of the building uh, to, to keep the energy consumption uh, lower. The construction itself, you can see here is the site, the 3D printed cassettes arriving uh, and then being erected, that's the portal uh, frame uh, that I mentioned. And you can see in some of the images, it was uh, uh, desired by the structural engineers to include some post-tensioning elements because the fact that the concrete was 3D printed meant that it, its behavior was rather uh, unpredictable uh, in terms of delamination and how it would respond over time. And bearing in mind that there's a whole level of complexity that comes into place when needing to actually get such structures approved by the local authorities, who of course have not dealt with 3D printed uh, structures before. And so uh, in partnership with them and the structural engineer, we developed uh, these uh, systems to uh, abate their concerns. You can see here the cladding elements uh, being erected on site. Uh, that they, they were uh, uh, CNC cut with a uh, five axis robotically controlled uh, system. And then the site uh, and the final uh, rendered uh, 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 cladding a layer on top. I mentioned at the beginning that it was a project with no contract, uh, uh, no budget, just a time frame and, and a client that was the ruler of the land. And this created a very particular kind of synergy uh, on the project. I would really describe it as a community build project uh, in Dubai. And you know, they say that architecture is like frozen music. And most of the time, it might be like classical music. The, the score is written and the orchestra plays. But this was a case of jazz. Whoever wanted to get involved was welcome to get involved. Some people played great. Some people didn't play so well. But in the end, it was a really uh, fantastic kind of experience. Uh, for everybody that, that got involved for the, for the pure joy of doing something that, that hadn't been done uh, before. So some pictures of the completed building. And you can see the overhanging uh, elements that self-shade the glass and some views of the interior uh, with the, the views and the slot windows to the outside, allowing the natural light to come into the building, uh, but to be uh, reflected off of those uh, overhanging uh, surfaces. This is the tree shaded courtyard and then the opening uh, by uh, Sheikh Mohammed. So what next? What is, the, what is the innovation here? Well, as I mentioned, there is a, a huge movement in terms of the so-called fourth industrial revolution, the ability to, to seamlessly bond the digital world with the physical, uh, the need to produce 2D drawings or even to share models with, with people is, 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 is soon becoming redundant. It's now possible to share models directly with machines that fabricate uh, and, and according to extremely kind of customized uh, uh, conditions. 
And as a result of this particular project, uh, Sheikh Mohammed has, has uh, stated that he desires 25% of uh, Dubai's buildings to be 3D printed by 2030. Now, of course, it depends how you cast that statistic, whether that's 3D printed by volume, by cost of uh, element, or even just by inclusion at all. Uh, but there is certainly uh, quite a bit of activity within uh, the contracting and design market to look at how to integrate uh, 3D printed uh, elements. But it's not so much only the 3D printing in itself that is really quite interesting and potentially innovative. Uh, this sort of holy grail, I suppose, of this kind of approach is to say, well, let's take material uh, from the, 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 the immediate vicinity, uh, from the site itself. Let's adapt a design to the very particular requirements and nature and geometry of a given site and use the material from that site, reduce global transportation and complete projects uh, without the need for this incredible uh, sort of environmental footprint that is the result of the current globalized uh, uh, method by which we exchange building material. There is an opportunity with some of these new ideas and technology to create buildings from the very environments in which they sit. And there are some pretty interesting experiments going on in this regard. This, for example, is a solar sintering uh, machine, which is actually harnessing the power of the sun directly through a Fresnel lens and, and a computer-controlled uh, printing bed to take the very sand of the environment that you see there and convert it into uh, objects of value, taking something of no value and upscaling it in terms of the value chain. Now, this is just a bowl but you can imagine the future possibilities at, a, at an architectural scale. So these are some other examples of the idea of 3D printed architecture that extracts material directly from the environment and upscale, ups, upscales it in terms of its value by creating forms of buildings uh, in entirely new and interesting ways. And I think it is worth remembering that this, this ability to now 3D print uh, um, our uh, structural and architectural forms has all sorts of opportunity to change the language and the approach uh, that we take to architecture. It's very important that we don't just repeat the forms of the past with tools of the future um, and, and, and look at very specific applications where 3D printed architecture makes sense, for example, with complex and adaptive kind of forms, or in this case, uh, in buildings that are located in extremely uh, remote areas um, that need uh, additional protection from, from extreme environmental uh, concerns. So with that, I'll just move on to the, uh, there's a, a small video clip, uh, which gives you a little bit of a, a walk around uh, the, the project. <laughs> We're at the beginning of a revolution in the production of architectural form and buildings. The Office of the Future builds on the work of the automated construction community to be the first permanently occupied 3D printed building in the world. The structure was produced in a large scale concrete plotting machine over a period of 17 days. A self-supporting concrete mixture was laid down in layers to form spanning trusses for the floor and roof slabs of the project. One technician monitored the function of the printer while a team of seven was involved in the installation on site. For the first time in history, it's now possible to take a computational model and convert it directly into three-dimensional form at an architectural scale. That's the real revolution of 3D printed architecture. This project have demonstrated that the 3D printing technology can really do a lot for the field of architecture and construction. The building skin is made up of a super insulating layer that projects over the glazed openings to reduce solar gain. These openings are designed to maximize sight lines to the surrounding landscape and bring natural light deep into the plan. The plan supports a range of public to private activities from creative interactions to quiet reflective work. External courtyard spaces are formed around the existing trees on site. 
One of the interesting things about the 3D printed concrete is it actually leaves these striations, these linear marks on the concrete itself. Next to the reception, there's an area where it's exposed behind the screen, and you could see the spectra cassette that lies underneath this cladding. The project is part of Dubai's broader strategy to incubate future construction technologies that offer high quality, comfortable and livable spaces. People are now questioning the conventional process of constructing buildings and asking, what is the future of construction? What is the future of design? How can these technologies really impact on society and in the end develop buildings that are better and more livable? Thank you very much.